Welcome back to the Escape Collective Tour Daily Podcast, everybody. We're coming to you from a sensational location, a unique location, a, well, one of the most beautiful hotels we've ever stayed in. This is the Campanile Villeneuve-sur-Lot, and, well... If it's Ian, good enough for the Ineos Grenadiers, <laughs> then it's good enough for us. <laughs> Ian, maybe, like, uh, kind of tell the story of how we came in here and set the scene a little bit. Yeah, sure. So we finished the stage in a sweaty gymnasium, because that is what we do. Sweaty. Then we rolled out and drove about 300 metres down the road to... Literally, I would just like to say that as the hotel booker... Chapeau. All time. Chapeau, Kaylee. Chapeau, Kaylee. Uh, we drove around a corner, and we were expecting a Campanile Hotel, which is not, not a really good hotel, but it's functional. It's a place to lay your weary head. It's not where I would expect to find an entire Ineos Grenadiers complement of staff. Uh, there was the bus. There we, was... we turned the corner. We were already laughing because our hotel was hilariously close to the press room. But then we turned the corner into the car park, already being like, this is funny, how close it is. And the, the hotel restaurant is called Le Restaurant. The and then Restaurant. we turned the corner, and then just a whole, a whole mess of Ineos Grenadier vehicles. Which explains why I couldn't find the Ineos Grenadier's bus at the finish line, actually. It makes a lot more sense yes, now. They just rode here. They were 300 <laughs> metres down the road, avoiding our cheeky little questions. Yeah. We're excited. What did we see so far? We saw uh, we saw Garrett Thomas walk very slowly up a set of stairs and he, then he, pull a well, mask on to go into the room. Yeah, the most depressing thing I've ever seen a multimillionaire do in my life. Uh, that was that was. I hope he's okay. I mean, the masks are back and at the tour, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But Garrett Thomas, as he walked up the stairs, it was a sort of the sort of lethargic confusion of a man who's just been riding a bike far too far, far too quickly for far too long. Um, and he kind of looked over at us, and our he, car has press stickers yeah, on it. Yeah, he saw the press like, sticker, oh, and you could God. see him just be like, oh, God's sake, they're definitely watching me. <laughs> Which you were. <laughs> but he did the safe thing, opened the door, popped his mask on, which yep. he'd carried up the stairs, and then made sure that it was on his face. Yep. And uh, there's an Ineos Grandier staff meeting going on. Of, we can in, see. of Netflix fame. Of Netflix fame, this one looks slightly more animated. There's a, a bald man I can see talking with quite a lot of vigour, who's definitely not Dave Brailsford, I don't think. Uh, Is there masks on in there? It's masks on in there, yeah. Which Jeez. must delight the staff at this particular campanile. <laughs> and then at the dinner tables, Ineos have brought their own sort of reserved table signs, uh, which is interesting because they've literally filled up the whole car park so even if other people wanted to stay here apart from us they couldn't we had dinner elsewhere we thought the vibes would be too bad if we were just <laughs> and also, you know like I, like I don't think we could have eaten here because I don't no, think they us the no. entire dining room of the restaurant well at first the guy was like you could eat outside and the lady was like you can't eat outside yeah so unclear which one was but, correct so Ineos getting fed from here they don't have their own van no they would have a, there's a chef over there and a chef van and they would have been like they just Cook the food and then bring it in here. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we have it. Binyam Germay won the 12th stage of the 2024 Tour de France. Guys, this makes him the sprinter du tour. Yeah. That's it makes your... him the sprinter of the tour. He has now won three stages. He is He's dominant. Uh, Philipson struggled today, finished in fourth even after the relegation yep. of Arnaud Demar. So Philipson has been very hot and cold, and I would actually say that it's more that his lead-out has been hot and cold. He, he was really not mm. positioned well today, and his, and his lead-out really wasn't there. Well, Van der Poel uh, crashed, to be fair. Which is a oh, big... Oh, was he caught up in it? Mm. Oh. I, I don't know if it was that crash, but he was in, in a crash, it. yeah. So then I guess the sort of follow-up question there is, you know, I don't want to say Philipson's wins last year. He had four, right? Were entirely down to Van der Poel, but it certainly helped... Right well, to have yeah, a, a a lead out man of that caliber, and every time he hasn't had Vanderpool doing exactly Vanderpool stuff this race, he's not one of. I stage. mean, how many other sprinters over the years could we have said this for? I mean, Mark Cavendish oh, with Michael Morco, like that's part of the thing. Is that but Vanderpool's need... different than Morco, right? Because Morco is like he'll sort of slide you p- between gaps and do all the right things and find the right wheel and and do it kind of tactically, whereas Vanderpool tends to do it very. I'm going to go up the outside of the peloton at a bajillion watts and pull it's you just, to exactly um, where you need to be. It's just Messi versus Ronaldo. It's Josh, it's Josh Robinson of the Wall Street Journal's book. That's it, true. There's two ways of, of playing a sprint finish. There's two ways of playing football. There's two different ideologies. And who's to say which one is better? Everyone has their opinion, but if they produce the same results, then... 
Boop. Well, but this year, Binyam Gramaya is producing better results. Yeah, because he's fast and he's in the form of his life, he said after the press conference yep. today. And he's just a, a good guy with good answers to questions, thoughtful, good to see, you know, someone who's not a Jasper Philipson or a Fabio Jakobsen or a Dylan Gronewagen, someone from Eritrea winning the sprints and being dominant. And his, he spoke on that a bit. Yeah, he's a 107 point gap over Philipson in the green jersey as well. Should be his. Should be his. Is it coming home to Eritrea? So I, I'm halfway through a story about him right now, and I actually haven't. Before we had a chance to record the podcast, I, had, I didn't have a chance to do the math on the rest of the sprint stages. There's a couple left. There's I think three left. Tomorrow is one. I think there's two more really nailed on sprint stages, uh, mm. which you know would suggest that uh, there's not that like the, the differential between first and second. Like let's say even Phillips and won the next three stages i next three sprint stages i i don't think that gramai is in too much danger particularly if he grabs any of the, any of the intermediate points but yeah I mean, it's still it's 107 points but it's, it's not it's not completely a foregone conclusion at this point wow well, but was back today as well yeah in second looked like he might have been able to nick it but then when you're looking at Wout Van Aert sprints and you then look just to the right and there was Binim Gamay. Yeah. Once again. Um, it the, the thing is when we have these dominant sprinters at the Tour, it doesn't help with any sort of like sprinter narrative apart from this guy's the best. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's quite fun when it's split between a few of them. Wout Van Aert once again was up against the barriers and had to slam on the brakes. Uh, that we was the, stop going That there, was then. the DeMar thing. So so I guess, yeah, that that's kind of where I was going with this is, so both Arno DeMar and Mark Cavendish were relegated today. They were put to the back of that of that group. They, they were docked points. We're going to get to you're in trouble later in the episode. Uh, but that was, that. that was the two of the things that were on the jury report today. Now, I've watched this a whole bunch of times. And the, the Cav thing, it kind of looks to me like he clips a wheel and actually catches himself like he moves sideways so fast it almost looks like he caught a crash uh and by that i mean like he, he his front wheel hit somebody else's rear wheel he sort of like shot sideways in a way that would often end in a crash and he maybe kind of kept it upright but it's really hard to tell from the footage that i've seen so i i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and just say you're not getting back into the very british weeds no i'm you've not had I, enough, you've had enough for one tour I'm not gonna sit. I'm not gonna sit here and say that that was any better or worse than than what he did with his 35th stage win. Okay. Because I don't want to step into that. No, that took up that, like a whole two three was, hours of your day. I was watching bad. you. It was great. <laughs> uh, I actually, I, I, again, just from my view of it, and I haven't, I haven't had a chance to watch it like 20 times or anything, but I've just watched it a bunch of times. Dane sent over the the, the clip. Looked to me like maybe something that was actually a bit accidental. Uh, now, Demar who was also relegated, his looked like a really small deviation to me. It was a smaller deviation than certainly what Cav did on his 35th, certainly what Philipson has done many, many times. The difference being that there's barriers there. And so he kind of closed the door on Walt Van Aert. Now, I kind of have an issue with the way that this this rule is, is written because I actually, when I look at DeMar in that sprint, I'm not sure you could sprint at the output that these guys are doing any straighter than that like he only moves maybe half a meter to the right right it's when you're when you're putting literally every single ounce of your energy into a bicycle to only move that much is actually not very much now yes it did it closed the door and wow and by the sort of letter of the rule you you know you push someone to the barriers like that you deserve to be relegated Uh, i guess my issue is more with the rule then because i think it should be based more on actual deviation right so if you swing 10 feet over to the left that is an issue and less about did you put someone in danger because most of the time these guys don't know if they're putting anyone in danger like yes they have some idea there are riders around them behind them they often know when someone's coming up the inside but they don't really know or in the example of the cav 35th like swung all the way across the road you don't know if you're going to clip someone's front wheel doing that you don't know if they're yeah. accelerating so i think that it, it, it adds this element of assuming that the sprinter has more sort of awareness and ability to understand what's happening around them than they actually do and i personally would not have relegated demar today in a broader sense this kind of gets to the problem that we were speaking about last night with the objectivity of the commissaire's rulings because you have things like benoit cosnefoy last year getting off and you know jumping having around a party, and having yeah. a beer 
and Julian Bernard having a kiss and one of them gets a fine and is told off for, you know, disgracing the image of cycling and the other one is not even, you know, mentioned. You see how says not wife, guys, it would seem. <laughs> <laughs> Much to Jonas Vingo's chagrin. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 inconsistent. I mean, every sport has inconsistencies, right? Laws and rules and whatever. There's always margin for error. There's always debate. And if there was, if everything was so exact, I mean, the problem is cycling is so far out of being any in any way exact. That that's, what, that's what makes it sort of frustrating, I guess, for the athletes and fans. But nothing's ever going to be perfect. But I don't know. Cycling's never been a, a sport where it's like, okay, these are the exact rules. There's always been bendings of them, both by the people who make the rules and the people who are supposed to follow them. Yep. I just don't like it. That's fine. You don't, you don't have to like it. <laughs> I don't have to like it. Like, well, I, I, it's, it, it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of shocking to me how frequently the jury feels like it gets it wrong. Like, it's, it's yeah. all, it's very frequent. What's going on in there? Who are where they? Where they're just like, they, they sort of change. And to their credit this time, after the Phillips and Cav day, where they, they warned everybody, we talked about this on the podcast, they warned everybody that they were going to be really, like, strict about this. Mm. And so, yeah, okay, if you warn everyone... You relegate Cav and you relegate Demar today, but at the same time, like I would challenge the members of the jury to sprint at full gas. That I'm not even going to say at 65k an hour because they couldn't, right? But just at full gas and ride as straight as Demar did. I don't think they could do it. One way to solve it would just to televise the inside of the commissaire vehicle, like they do with VAR now in football. That'd be kind of fun. So you just see the discussion and how they make their decision, which would open up to a level of scrutiny that maybe. They would make better decisions potentially. Docs the umpires. Exactly. That's yeah. that's actually the that's the title of it of the the proposition. Yeah. There were some other things that happened in the bike race today. Well, uh, sorry, before we go into that, I was yeah. just going to say with the Wat Van Aert thing. He's been getting sick enough of having the door closed on him that him and Jasper Phillips are apparently not currently speaking. Interesting. They, I think, Wat Van Aert maybe tried to talk to Jasper Phillips in the peloton and just like discuss the various sprint goings on and Jasper Phillips wasn't having any of it. And so, I was like, okay, fine, whatever. It's not yeah. like Belgians to be falling out, is it? Belgian <laughs> riders. They usually all get on so well. I mean, I don't know. If it if you're wout and this keeps oh, happening. Oh, you'd be furious. You, you'd, you'd be, be furious. furious, but at the same time, stop going up the barrier yeah. side. That's the side where the door can be closed. Yeah. If you go up the other side, the door is open. That's kind Things of how go. sprinting works, yeah. right? You take a risk. Generally, the sprinters are over toward whatever barrier side they're on because of wind direction. So if the wind is coming from the right, they're on the right barrier mm. to try to get that little bit of sort of tuck in behind the fans. It's basically. usually the right barrier as well, weirdly. As of late, it's been the right barrier because we've been heading south and most of the winds are coming from the oh, west, God. right? Kaylee's on his compass ship. Do you remember that last year? <laughs> I mean, that's infuriating. That was so, that was so mad. <laughs> I, was, I was shopping for a watch and I, I bought a slightly smaller and cheaper watch than Kaylee's watch. Um, cause his my pre- watch was $11, so I don't know how you went smaller and cheaper than my watch. My watch was not $11. Mine was about 80 but it was bought in Norway. <laughs> Ooh, la di da Anyway, Mine so was bought I, at Walmart for $11. That's really I've never annoying. been to Walmart. I would love to. So the one that I bought didn't have a compass on it because I thought, that won't do. But then, uh, then my wife reminded me, but then you won't be able to tell Kaylee... <laughs> <laughs> about compass yeah. directions and sounds. Your smart. wife has a weirdly, not weirdly, a, uh, an admirable encyclopedic knowledge of the podcast talking points. Yeah, I love it. That's good. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Marie. I think I'm just sorry for doxing your wife. <laughs> South facing sprint stages in mainland Europe are often going to have wind coming from You're the right hand side. Mainland Europe. <laughs> Due to Colorado, prevailing winds. Beautiful Colorado. With the Visit Colorado.com. Mmm, <laughs> Colorado. Mm, taste the sunset <laughs> in the direction that you want. And home. <laughs> Breed children my with high, being, naturally high hematocrits. My point, my point <laughs> being that if you go up essentially like the windward side of a sprinter, which is also going to be the barrier side, you should expect to have that door closed. Yeah. It's your own damn fault at that point. You like, tell him that tomorrow. I'll go and I'll just be like, wow, go left. <laughs> just it is go left. Des- yeah, it was a destiny. Sure Let's go be, west. He'll be thrilled okay, to go left. That, east, probably. actually. France and the UK both gone left recently, so maybe it's time for Belgium. <laughs> Let's talk about Roglic. So, uh, primos. This, uh, primos. So Whoa. I'm bummed about this. Uh, I still have sort of like, I don't know, deep-seated primo sadness 
uh, from the yeah. tour that was ripped from his hands. From his icy cold from hands. From his icy cold hands from, by, by Tade Pogacar. Uh, but yeah, today he crashed outside of the sort of like everyone gets it the same like 12 time limit. It was like 12 kilometers to go. So he had to have a sort of punishing and humiliating chase back on that would never work. Well, and then so here's the other, here's the other thing is that they, like they sent the whole team back with him, right? Which is great. So they sent the whole team back with him. And the whole team, like normally you would have seen just this like hectic chase, yeah. right? And instead we saw kind of a very relaxed... It was like a resigned shuffling towards the finish, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And I think that what that makes clear is that, is that, yes, Roglic got back in his bike, but he was not capable of a full gas chase to, to, to sort of pull time back. Uh, they ended up losing a significant amount. That group... Came across the line, two twenty-seven back. Only Jai Hindley finished at two minutes two seconds, so maybe he was caught up, and then they were just like, "Just stay in your group and get to the finish." We've got enough people here. I'm actually, I'm not entirely. Maybe the the listeners can correct me on this, but I'm pretty sure I saw him in the Roglic group, and then he just left them. But I'm not oh, entirely really? sure. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 quote me on that. Even though this is going out to many many people you're suggesting that it was a leisurely ride back to the bus it wasn't leisurely it, it was just leisurely. like they it weren't wasn't... like you can you can see when they're going hard right like they're on the front of their saddle they're down on their handlebars and, like, and they stressed. were just kind of like riding well they, they were stressed at the bus and i know that because bob jungles nearly took out a french rider oh really and then a german staff member of red bull laura hansgrohe said what's the fuck <laughs> that's fun at him you also saw a uh, German member of the media really lose it this morning in the mix zone when they didn't get their interview. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Did you hear about one this, Kaylee? Oh. I've ever seen at the Tour de France. So there was there was a man, tall glasses, uh, German, who was was standing waiting in the mix zone. Which is where you, uh No. Okay. Um, it's the only one I know. It's where you stand. Why are there Gregorian chants happening behind us? <laughs> Don't let it put you off, hun. It's very very upsetting. Um, we're standing waiting in the mix zone, which is where we get our interviews with the riders. Horrible and little pen for little human yeah, pigs. It's a, it's, <laughs> it's a little place where where they push you, and sometimes you get ignored by the riders. But this guy was really beating himself up over it. So a rider <laughs> rode past, and he was like, like speaking to himself, but out loud, and he was like, "Ah, oh, fuck!" <laughs> like, like oh. fists balled. Like punching his hand. Was he like a TV guy who like really needed? No, no, no written, yeah. written. Yeah. I recognize him. Not the guy with long scraggly hair. He's t- got like close c- hair. What, what is going is on? <laughs> Sorry, podcast listeners. This is can not good that? viewing. I don't think you can hear it. Okay, well we're about to ascend. <laughs> <laughs> they are French. Can confirm. Yep. I think it must be like some sort of choir. I don't know. It's don't like weird. it. The anyway, Chance festival midsummer. Yeah. Back to Red Bull Burhansgrohe. The real way you knew the tour is kind of over for them is Rolf Aldag was finally shepherded out of the bus to just make the media go away and say something. And he did the quiet cav where he speaks so quietly into the TV microphones that it's really hard for anyone to hear him unless you're right there, which is a classic tactic to kind of not invite any further scrutiny or questions. And We've actually got a recording for that day. Oh, we do, yeah. yeah. What day? Uh, today. Today day. Yeah. yeah. From uh, Rolf Aldag. We do. You, could, you were close enough to hear him? Because this was not really our day today. Were you there? No. I was there. I was pretending that I was Rolf Aldo. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm still a bit swung by <laughs> Why don't you let me this. do my little role plays? I'm trying. It's, it's because the so, previous German one went, <laughs> went so long and so confusingly that I'm now apprehensive. So Roglic is still in sixth place. Yeah. He's just dropped Only down behind. Only by two seconds. He's dropped down behind Ro- Joel Carlos, Almeida no, and Carlos, Carlos Rodriguez, Rodriguez. in here, actually. Who is, you know. Our dinner friend. Our, our campanile friend tonight. Yeah. Yeah, and he's got a sizable gap on Mikel Landa in seventh, right? So, like, he can still probably ride for top ten. However, I will say that the vibe at the bus, and I'm sure you guys picked up on this, is that we're not sure he's starting tomorrow. No, they said his injuries are quite bad. He, like, immediately got in the shower. This is according to Rolf Oldag, to, like, wash off his, like, cuts and bruises and scrapes to just see how bad the damage was. Because he also crashed yesterday. And he crashed yesterday, and I got to witness the Primoz Roglic shower water piling out of the bottom of the bus it, tomato soup? it looked soapy it wasn't tomato, it wasn't quite rivers of you know whatever um but yeah i think yeah you guys were saying he hit his head uh, quite hard it seemed yeah. like wow it's always hard to tell well and the yeah, it's, it's not hard to tell because i've got a picture of it and oh. it looked like his helmet had been like grated with the cheese grater. oh really Ooh. and another little bit of color like gross color but color was Give that as he us. was riding through the um like gaggle of spectators yeah. and stuff there was a man running alongside him in a crisp white T-shirt who was trying to snap a selfie. Okay. And then, like, didn't really have his line right. And Primoz 
went into him with his bloody shoulder from the crash. And the crisp white shirt was no longer crisp or white. That's kind of Oof. fun. Yeah. He could that's auction off. I'm wearing a crisp white t-shirt you are. today. Yeah, imagine if I you could just have done that against a bloody could, I could have just like gone and stuck his shoulder in my chest and we could have known that exactly. Alongside Amai Sable, uh, Davi Godu <laughs> and Poe t-shirt. Most Roglic blood shirt. Escapecollective.com forward slash shop. Probably. We haven't, I haven't actually checked that URL. I just keep saying it. Um, it's in the menu. You'll find it. Rolf Oldag did say he was asked about the road furniture that brought down Harold Tejada. There wasn't yep. very clearly signposted, and then ricocheted through the bunch. Rolf Oldag was like, well, the thing is, this road furniture is here for the other 364 days of the year, and it helps protect, protect normal people. It's so philosophical. It's it, was so, a, it was, I kind a, of liked it's it. It's a very Rolf Oldag response. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, and the one day doesn't protect the riders, so unfortunately that's, that's just the way it is. But also there's a lot of it. talk about Like, road. there's a man who understands... That the world is bigger safety. than... Yeah. I love a traffic island, me. Like urban planning. Yeah. Rolf Aldag, urban planner. Uh, <laughs> Parks and Rec. Yeah. <laughs> Co-starring Rolf Aldag. <laughs> the thing about road furniture in France, though, just stop leaving sofas on the road. True. That's the worst joke. You said so far this tour, so congrats. <laughs> I was really disappointed that Kaylee cut me off. Sorry. Because I thought, oh, it would, a good it one. It wouldn't have been any better. So <laughs> Never mind. <we're, laughs> I'm sure I've hit many a doozy in, in, so far. But yeah. The well, I mean, France does have way more road furniture than a lot of other places. Well, is that true? Maybe it's just because we're at the tour, and that's why we I see a lot of Belgium, it. Belgium, Belgium is furnitury. A lot of continental yeah. Europe just has a fuck ton of mini roundabouts <laughs> and other sort of traffic common measures, which are just can I don't know. They are, it leaves a lot to be desired. I think that's it from the uh, race discussion today. I, I, a small virage corrections already. There's only two more sprint stages. Ah, oh, self we're self corrected. We're self virage. Yeah, self virage. Uh, which yeah, it tells me that Binyam Kermai might be the first Eritrean to take a green jersey. A green first, jersey or any first, jersey first to Afri- the finish. No, was there South African who got the green jersey? Green jersey. I mean, Robbie Hunter probably had it for a little bit, but I don't think he ever won it. Uh, I mean, obviously, Chris Froome won the yellow jersey if he's Kenyan. Unclear. Well, uh, <laughs> that's a discussion not for this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or for anyone apart from probably Chris Froome who gets to decide where he's from. Yeah, uh, but anyway. We're going to stick with Eritrean, black African, yeah. first one to take a Elite, jersey yeah. to the end of the Tour de France. Seems more and more likely by the day. Well, Benim Gamay was asked by Jeremy Woods of The Guardian to like sort of explain what, what it's like being, you know, the most successful so far at the Tour, black African rider. Yeah, and uh, the only black guy in the entire peloton. This year, yes. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you know what? I would like more black guys in, in the peloton because this is not a global sport. And he's completely right. Like, it does, when you look at all the flags and stuff like that, it does seem more global. But if you compare it to other sports, in no way does it actually cover enough of the globe as other no. sports. Like, we like to believe, and I'm sure a lot of second fans like to believe that this is a global sport and it's a reasonably popular sport. But if you actually look at the demographics, it's pretty small. Pretty white, pretty European. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe so, and he been in my hopes that this will lead to, and it, 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 this happened before. You know, we've, well. seen, we've seen it with lots yeah. of other nations where you have these, what do you call it, people leading the way. And, Trailblazers, uh, Johnny. Yes, I knew you'd come in clutch, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it'd be a Portland team that you would uh, reference there. <laughs> no, I'm How very hipster of you. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on from the, uh, the one bike more racing. thing. Yeah, quick one thing. More thing. Uh, Chaz on Discord. Uh, reliably informed us on uh, on Discord today, surprisingly enough, that he thinks he had a fake moo on the TV broadcast today, <laughs> which I would not be surprised. But as we rode, as we drove out, because we was driving the course for the first 16 kilometers today, there, was we got on one, set of cows. there were two enormous bulls. bulls. Like enough bulls for Remco Evanapol to not have a problem with it. But yeah, they were huge, massive. They were enormous. Yeah. And we had a comment which was maybe not right next to the bike race. Yes. If you startled those bulls and they ran into the yeah. road, nothing is stopping them. Carnage. Yeah. Yeah. Roman Bardet. Just plastered across some yeah. horns. Like, uh, like the run, like the pa- it's like Pamplona all it's over like again. <laughs> uh, we have a small Jonas Vingago facial hair update. You pointed that out to me. He rode past at the finish. Yeah. Well, I noticed primarily. So he's blonde, so it's hard to tell. But yes, I saw it close enough you, okay, you in say high this, definition. You say this first, then I'll say what I observed after. He's got a mustache. He does. Yeah. Mm. Little little mustache. There is a little mustache, but yeah. it's also a little goatee. Oh. So I, I think he's not just letting the upper lip grow. I think he's 
just generally letting it grow. I kind of like it. Is it is it the sort of um, Marco Halla golf ball thing that he told us about the other day? It could be, or it could be like trying to tap into some yellow jersey gains from Julian Alaphilippe uh, and that kind of style. Truly trying to become one of the tree people. <laughs> My observation was that he had his bottle of uh, tart cherry juice or whatever. Yep. And there, okay, I'm going to try and describe the bottle. The bottle for UK listeners is like a bottle of Oasis, where it's like mm. a wider like bottle top for us listeners i would say like snapple but in a yes. plastic bottle not yes. a glass you bottle are, you are exactly right Kerry. Yeah. for you australian got... listeners we're dealing with like a powerade like a bigger lid at the top that would work for us yes. as well yeah yes. gatorade powerade gatorade. guys well done this is some <laughs> great not references the pop top. crucially not the pop top <laughs> crucially, not, crucially not the pop top because jonas vingo popped it uh had it in his mouth one hand on the handlebars and just unscrewed it with his mouth with the bottle and then like spat like not spat it but like grabbed it in his hand but it was one seamless motion that took like maybe one second and it was just it was incredible Beautiful. seeing an athlete at the peak of their powers <laughs> is just something that's marvelous it, to it's, see. it's actually a doubly impressive feat because in europe there's new uh, environmental oh, yeah. laws where the Do they not have, have that in Australia? Absolutely not. We throw our things into the, no, into the creek. Either. You don't have that. Yeah. It is kind of annoying. No, you just yep. ditch the lid. Our caps just... It's annoying, but also not. Because if you're like on a train, you open a bottle and then it's like moving and you drop the lid, then it's like... No, no, no. Gone. We just throw them into the creek so that the, pop- the platypuses have to eat them. Ah, yeah. I That's see. That's how they become That's big and strong. That's how you got megafauna. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is it but- platypuses or platypi? Platypi. Platypi. Well, oct- it's octopuses, not octopi. So I'm, uh, it's a Greek or Latin. It's um, I don't think it's either. Are we getting Greek in the creek? No. <laughs> Toga party. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we can move on. Anyway, yeah. the lids stay attached. Yeah, they do. So you you unscrew the lid and <laughs> breaking then breaking news to the Australians and American listeners. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it blew my mind. Like you it's didn't kind of annoying it. because if you if you're having like a milky drink or a smoothie drink, then you. Hey, like the lid is touching milk, you. like touching the tip of yeah. your nose. What no, are we t- talking? Vingago and his bottle it's opening. It's good content, Kaylee. Okay, sorry. It's what the people want. <laughs> the uh, Bring it yeah. back to Vingago's facial hair, please. No, I'm not bringing it back. I was just oh. helping set the scene for Johnny to continue setting the scene for his facial hair. Yeah, I mean, oh, guys, it's good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> um, another observation from today. Yeah. Actually, when we uh, scurried away from the Ineos hotel of which people are sitting down for dinner now i believe it's still the staff i think the riders might have already eaten their dinner i don't know if they have i think it's getting a bit late 20 to 9 because all of the all of the glasses still have this is too late no but remember that yesterday when i spoke to movistar they don't remember this you never told me yeah it was on. i think they probably eat late so here's here's my theory i'm not a nutritionist they've already eaten post-stage and then they have another one exactly so immediately post-stage they're going to try to again hit that glycogen window, get a bunch of food in them uh, relatively quickly, but that will make them kind of full until probably like nine. So maybe they eat so at when, nine. When do they sleep then? Never. Like 11 like to... 10 to like 10 If they're going to eat it... Okay, it's 20 to nine now. If they eat it like... Say they start eating at nine, if you absolutely yam it down in your throat, that's 9.30. And then, and then a, what? You're just going to sleep straight away after half an hour. No, yeah. you do a diabol- diabolical shit until 10.30. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then, I, they're doing that in the morning, surely. I think that I, don't. I believe I think these I, boys can do a couple. I think they're doing it all the time. I think their insides are a sorry the mess. We were we were talking about about this in the car the other day. Why were we talking about it? Because they have so many gels. Yeah, all the time. Like they skip lunch every day and they have nothing but gels. Right? Can't be good. Sometimes some like rice cakes and stuff, but like I've done that for one day for like a big race for like a Leadville or yeah. something, and it destroys me for like three days. So you, I don't really know how they at do the, it uh, at the smaller races like. Guangxi, for example, last year, where there's just like one public toilet around this, the, whichever desolate wasteland you're sat on the stage at that day, you just, in the morning, there's just a queue of riders waiting for the cubicle just because I imagine their stomach's in bits the whole time. I don't know if this is too much information, but I'm going to say it anyway. Love it. Uh, Guillaume Martin. Yes. It's going to be too much information. I was waiting to talk to him about his donkeys. Yeah. And I was waiting for probably 10 minutes, and the press person from Covetous kept coming out. Who's a nice guy? Uh, I think so. He is. What's he's his a name? nice guy. Don't know. Can't remember. But, but he's nice. nice. He's tall and blonde, I think. Oh, okay. Maybe I wasn't talking to the press guy. Maybe uh-huh. I was just speaking to somebody else that was helpful. With glasses? I don't remember. Ah. This is the problem. Like, I, I talk to people and I don't actually remember any of their defining characteristics. I walk away and they're a complete blank slate to me. They are... <laughs> 
generic man. Yes. <laughs> and then I go back the next day and there's an entire busload of generic men at whatever <laughs> bus I talk to. And I'm just like, eh, which one of you can speak This English? is your pitch for more diversity in the peloton <laughs> or within the teams. I, I think it's my pitch for better memory retention. Oh, I see. Anyway, Guillaume Martin, what were we going to overshare? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was doing a big toilet trip. And oh yes, this isn't too much information. And then I kept waiting, and then the man went back onto the bus and said, "No, still on the toilet." <laughs> and then I kept waiting. <laughs> and so then debasing to have someone say about you. A, a second, second time he went back on, and he was still on the toilet. And then finally he emerged. I asked him about his donkeys, and then that was my my morning's work done. Nice. Do you guys think we can get on Garrett Thomas's podcast? I don't want to. It's a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. We'll have to shill uh, ketones. <laughs> True. <laughs> and say, Poh, Poh, chapeau. Poh. You think he's making it right now? To be fair to him, Mask he's on. doing he's doing our job and his job. That's it's what we say true. about a lot of people. Like That's you true. can't chapeau to him. Yeah, chapeau. but he gets driven around. You all got driven around today. I did all the driving. It was a bad fucking day. knackered. You did a great job. Bad day of driving. You did a great bad job. job. Uh, one other observation when we went to dinner. It's raining on us right now. Uh, was that the the Haribo part of the caravan was at the Ibis Steel, actually pronounced style, uh, hotel next to us having dinner. And they sort of, in silence, rolled out of the car park and seen a caravan float in silence just <laughs> operating within the normal traffic. You know, with like a big green lizard on the top, slightly sinister, yeah. yeah. Or like the Candy King, who has a little staff and crown, and is big and pink. We actually had a great morning with the caravan. I don't know if this is for today or whether we should save it. We're gonna because... we're gonna do another podcast, maybe a tangents podcast about the caravan. But give them a little treat of what you experienced this morning. Oh, I'll just say that I got almost a clean sweep of product. You did very well. Did I was impressed well. with your yep. conversion. And then I, I I actually got multiples of some. So I passed them through a fence to some peasants. Yes. And then they gratefully accepted my dish soap. <laughs> they did. And you were, you, were, you were divvying it out between them all, which was quite egalitarian. It was nice. There was, there was the old man. There were the children. I, I, I spread the love. Well, we want to hear from the Jiro today. So Abby gave us a little rundown. Let's hear from Abby. She said after the race that um, baby G, when she passed baby G, she was like, yes, you've got it. So she already knew that she'd won before she even really opened up the sprint. It was just such an amazing lead out by SC Works Pro Time. And they had Elena Cicchini leading into that corner first. And so they had, you know, a lot of firepower going into that sprint. And I think Kebeki's a very interesting character this year because she is adapting so much as a rider and I think we'll have a lot more to say about this on Saturday but she's she has lost like an edge of the sprint and that winning the sprint today like it's not like she's up against you know the best sprinters in the peloton Balsamo uh, abandoned the stage early unfortunately due to inflamed tonsils she's having just like the year from hell I and Kiara Consoni gets better and better every time but I think Pecky like this was a full team effort yeah I I completely agree with you and I'm glad you've said that because it's so important to note you know you just saw the absolute devastation that lead out did and the gaps as you say were already there I mean she unleashed the power in the final however positioning confidence getting it right being well protected being in the right place was absolutely everything because we did we did see that go wrong for the other teams ultimately um, I feel like, you know, Chiara Contoni will be disappointed with today. Of course she will be. But I think coming into the stage, she sort of said, like, the pressure, of course, comes off a little bit when you've already got a stage win in this stage race. Uh, on the scale of the zero, it's kind of, you know, you don't think job done. I'm not going to go for it again, of course. But, you know, I think that disappointment will be a little bit softened by the fact that they've already done what they've done earlier in the week but their sprinters their bike racers they they want to win and and people did make mistakes in that run in it did end up you know, becoming quite ragged in in the technical turns um you had to be so well positioned and and SD works has got absolutely everything right and like you say it was just the confidence and conviction and experience that really paid off today rather than it just being like a head to head to the line. Yeah. I mean, the coming into the sprint, it was like so hectic. There were just people all over the place. Like teams were losing each other left, right and center. I was really hopeful for Ruby Roseman Gannon at one point, but Liv Alula Jacob just seemed to really lose control of their lead out after having a, a solid run in for, 
for a good couple kilometers and Consoni also had like a really good lead out at one point and then things just kind of fell apart it, it felt like yeah SC Works was really just the only ones that were able to like stick together which we've seen time and time again we saw it at the UAE tour over and over again and and we're just seeing it again yeah we we are missing sprinters of course we haven't got shots cool there we haven't of course got weavers there because they're going to look at the stage by stage of the Giro and go, hmm, I mean, there's not the biggest amount of opportunities when you look uh, at the numbers there. So before we get to today's My Sable standings, we were talking about a potential My Sable jersey for next year, which presents both logistical and economical challenges. It does. For a fledgling cycling media company. So our very own Abby Mickey had her own idea of how we could do this. And she sent me a voice note, which sometimes I'm a bit apprehensive of getting a Nabby Mickey voice note at eight in the morning, because maybe I've done something wrong. But this time it was just a, a passionate suggestion of an idea instead of the jersey. So let's hear from Abby. No, you shouldn't get Mayo Sable jerseys because, well, for one, that would be expensive if you were to have 21 Mayo Sable jerseys or 20 to hand out each day. That sounds like it's probably over budget. You should get pins, like a Mayo Sable pin, so they can pin it to their regular jersey. And then after it's like passed on, well, you could either get like a bag of pins and they could have that pin forever that they once wore the Mayo Sable, or you could then go take it away from them when they've lost it to give it to the next rider. And then whoever has it at the end wins it. So Abby suggested instead of the jersey for the Mayo Sable, pins. I think it's great. That is fun. Yeah. Something small that we can carry yeah. with us that a rider can put on. Or throw away. And the UCI might not notice. Yeah. Uh, I, those wristbands was the other the other suggestion yeah. that came slap from Discord. Bands. I, I kind of hate slap bands though. It just reminds me of like being in year eight at school and, you know. Getting slapped. Not getting slapped. Did you but get like, slapped a lot in year eight? Not in year eight. <laughs> <laughs> so there was another year. No, in my school, uh, what we did was uh, you'd rip each other's top pockets off. What does that mean? Which is very annoying. So literally, on your shirt pocket, you'd if someone had left their top pocket exposed, you would just grab it and rip it off. What do you? And mean everyone's top pocket. No, but it's just on the shirt on your school shirt. You had a like on a like a suit shirt. You had a top pocket. What are you going to put in there? Your little. Pants? I don't know. I was like thirteen. I wasn't thinking about that. <laughs> but everyone had the top pocket, and then you'd rip each other's off. And then obviously everyone's mothers would be furious. And yet we continued. Because <laughs> between the hours of eight and four, no one could stop us. <laughs> there was a, a time when I was playing football. Oh. And I had a, a shirt. Legend. A, a school shirt. And Anger somebody lad. grabbed me in a tackle. And all of the buttons popped off. And then I had to fashion buttons out of a daisy. <laughs> like all the way down. <laughs> that is the most you anecdote I've <laughs> possibly ever heard. Uh, so we didn't... Uh, managed to talk to Jakob Fulsang this morning for, for reasons. reasons. For reasons. <laughs> the new My Sable, unfortunately, Nielsen Paulus. Oh no. Just missed out, as did Frank Vandenbroek, who I think would also have been good. Tij Benu also missed out. Maybe we've got away with one there. <laughs> Davide Formolo from Ooh. Movistar. One hour, one minute, He's, two seconds. He might get it. Do you think? We should try. Do you speak well, English? Yeah, gonna hold he it. does. He does? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We've got to give some, like. I interviewed him in English, like. Eight years this ago. is our chance to provide yeah. some shine to, to Movistar Sort of France. Maybe we can trick them into thinking that it's the new team's classification. <laughs> so, yeah, David A, we're coming for you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, let's hear from Jose Ben about tomorrow's stage. Tomorrow we head to Po. Oh, it's all potion me. Did someone say shoe shopping? We have a whole t shirt for you. Head to the yes. shop, head to the merch section Should I of the just website. Check if that is the. The, uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's in uh, the, if you open the website and you click on merch or shop or whatever, you'll find it's it. It's easy to find it. We believe in no, you know, it, your intelligence. Slash shop does not work. <laughs> <laughs> I've just found out. Slash merch. Yes, slash merch. No, that just brings up one hoodie. <laughs> Why have we not got our own URL sorted out? You can okay. buy the hoodie. Okay, what but. you should do, go to escapecollective.com. Head to the burger menu, which one of you said the other day didn't work, and then merch is at the bottom. Menu. It's up the top. It's up the top. Not on mobile. Both, Not on it's mobile. It's in both places. Okay. Every, Seventy percent right, of sorry, readers Johnny, wanna, read on mobile. Do you want to do the mobile version, and I'll do the desktop version afterwards? <laughs> I just did it. Now you do the the, the, the desktop okay. version. Desktop version. There's a menu up the top above the escape banner, and on the right hand side, it says shop. Or you can 
Excuse me. Glad we need to sort this out. It says merch. I'm looking at it right oh, now. Oh, it does say merch. <laughs> or if you want the URL, it's http colon Please. forward slash forward slash Please escape stop. hyphen collective dot. No, my, no, there's no hyphen in there. Myshopify.com. Oh, there is one. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Take that back well, and write this what, in. What we'll say is people have actually been buying the T-shirts. Uh, Jared has been showing us. A lot of people have been buying T-shirts. Which is so amazing. Uh, thank so, you for spending your money on our shit instead of someone else's shit. Yep. I will also say that for some reason, because my sim, my eSIM is in Poland, I can tell you that the It's All Po To Me oversized T, brackets unisex, is 181 <laughs> Polish zloty. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do is the Dava Go Do one. It looks... Every time I look at it, it looks more and more Stain Island. So I just want to get sort of like a medium and put it in a big like Millwall fan who's looking ready to like beat someone's head in <laughs> and get a picture of him outside the uh, outside the den. The teas are nice. You should get them. Yeah. These are real good. Yeah. Thanks, Jared. All right. Let's hear from Jose because tomorrow we go to Poe, source of the T-shirt. <laughs> and two Mexican, at least two Mexican restaurants. Why are we which... going to be able to go to both in one night is the question. We're I don't want to go for one night. I really I would, no, that Mexican restaurant was like decent. When uh, we went with Jace. Yeah. Yes, but ah, a Jace. squirrel shat on me twice. Yes, but that was kind of part <laughs> of the <luck>. fun. <laughs> Let's hear from Jose, because she has a little update on Poe for the fifth time. So this is so we, we go to Poe like every year, which has, means that has Jose, Jose has done, done five different ones. She's done between here and uh, somewhere, somewhere else. She's done five about Poe. Have we actually checked them to see if they're the same thing every year or not? Because <laughs> if, I was, if I was Jose, that's what I would do. <laughs> she I imagine says, she hasn't. Jose says that if we go back to Poe next year, she's going on strike and she's not doing any Poe-related blogs. Fair enough. <laughs> Which is totally fair enough. <laughs> what she could do next time we go back to Poe, sorry for the derail, she could do the time that Wout Van Aert crashed into a, a Oh, fence. yeah. And I was very green. It was my first Tour de France. Yeah. And I asked a big Dutch man uh, because he said Wout crashed. And I thought I was like breaking some news. And I was like, Wout Van Aert or Wout Pulse? <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me like an idiot, as he should, because we'd all we'd all seen the start order. Ah. Uh, <laughs> it was Wout Van Aert. <laughs> I love that. He's like, Wout Pulse went an hour ago. <laughs> But that was my big, uh, my big scoop, <laughs> attempted <laughs> scoop, where I was just trying to break whichever Welsh it was, okay. thinking that the entire world's media and the television got Hansen. it wrong. Let's hear from Jose. I, this is new information to me. You never knew this. <laughs> no. Okay, wait. Well, you we'll, were co- there. we'll come back to this. Let's go to Jose. Yeah, but I didn't. I know. Stop. I knew which wow it was. Jose's waiting. <laughs> I'm less of a fucking idiot now, Kaylee. Okay. Let's go to Jose. In stage 13, we go to Paul. Again. This is my fifth year doing these daily blogs, and it's also my fifth blog on Poe. In 2020, I talked about Henry IV. In 21, about the doping scandals related to Poe. In 22, there was no stage, but in 23, the Tour de France Homme, as well as the Tour de France Femme, visited. I addressed some cuisine, like the Béarnaise sauce, cheese and the hearty soup called Garbure, and I told you how a man born in Poe became king of Sweden. So, what's left to say? Aviation. Yes, the history of aviation in Poe is distinguished early on by its connection to the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur. In 1908, Wilbur Wright chose Poe as the location to train the first European aviators. They were initially located in Le Mans, but moved south due to its mild winter weather. And this way, they could offer year-round flying and Poe became one of the first European centres for aviation training. The Wright brothers started their career in bikes. The brothers repaired, rented, built and sold bikes in Dayton, Ohio. The Wrights used concept skills and profits from their bike company to support their aviation experiments. And while running their bike business, Wilbur and Orville studied the problem of mechanical and human flight. And after reading extensively and studying bird flight and the work of pioneer Otto Lilienthal, spoiler, he died in one of his experiments, the brothers became convinced that human flight is possible and decided to conduct some experiments of their own. The European aviation community, especially those in France, were 
openly derisive, calling them bluffeurs. They proved them wrong, of course, and by moving to Po, they did French aviation a favour, because even after the Wright brothers left, aviation remained part of the city's DNA. There's even an Air Force regiment based in Po. Maybe Bart Lemon could visit. Just south of Po, we find a small but wonderful wine region. Joris, the wine expert at restaurant Julia in Rotterdam, told me recently it's an up-and-coming region, so the prices are still affordable. The two wines he served us that night were sweet, but not sickly sweet. There was a drier variety with the fish dish, and the sweeter wine that came with the strawberries for dessert was absolutely my favourite. It also came with an interesting story, as wine experts so often have at higher-end restaurants. In the Jurançon, they use the grape varieties Petit or Gros Mansin, which are native to the region. Funnily enough, there is a grape variety called Jurançon, but that doesn't grow here. Anyways, back to where we were. To get more sweetness into the wine, they harvest the grapes quite late, well into October, November and even December. Leaving them on the vine gives them more time to sweeten and develop aromas. Think about, you know, dried raisins here. And the late harvest is possible due to the climate. Climate, but it comes with some risks because when it's too cold or too wet, the entire harvest can go to waste. The decision when to harvest is collective between the winemakers, the manager of the winery and the wine growers. And the result is a great wine. I had the Clos La Perre Mouillou and... I'm actually not a wine drinker, but I absolutely love this one. Next to a sweet dessert, it also goes wonderfully well with a cheese platter. And you know by now that I absolutely live for cheese platters. Santé! I can't wait to get to Poe. I, it you, centers if, us. If you boys will have me, I'd like to join the shoe shopping expedition. Yeah. It's taken me two years to feel comfortable enough, but now let's go. <laughs> let's go buy some years. new cleats, fellas. <laughs> two years to buy a new pair of shoes. Actually, genuinely. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. Uh, these shoes are from <laughs> Poe last year. I'm wearing the Nikes from Poe last year. When I did the poll, which Ian crushed you in, sorry, Kenny. I know. Uh, we never, what, what were the actual results? Uh, it was like 60, 66 30. to oh. 34. Oh. Yeah, pretty oh. tough. I actually won Brutal. the last two polls related to fashion against Kaylee as well. And more crushingly, your mother-in-law, Kaylee, actually voted for Ian based on his sock choice. <laughs> and I, I agreed. Uh, so but good. on the other hand, someone did, someone did ask me, for which shoes you had and I had to ask you what brand of shoes like what style of Nikes they were and they're like I, the new I waffle thing from Nike I would yeah actually they're good I would buy if I see them I will buy some of them yeah they're great. I would actually say that I wanted to buy the same pair of shoes and then Kaylee bought them so I got some New Balance ones which, which you very, didn't you didn't like because you immediately asked me do you like them and I was like he's just spent like 80 years on these I can't <laughs> say no so I just said yes and but that, they were disgusting that is also how I remember <laughs> That's also I how, how I remember that you haven't bought new shoes since last year. I got the same because I didn't like the size of the shoes that I bought on the day that we left Poe. Ah. And I had to get some shoes loaned to me whilst we climbed up the Galibia or something. And oh, you yeah, offered it was the Galibia. Me your shoes. No, it wasn't the Galibia. No, Poe and Poe and the Galibia are nowhere near <laughs> each other. <laughs> Tourmalet, yes. Tourmalet. Tourmalet. Right. Uh, yeah. You offered your shoes to me. And at that point, they were already looking pretty manky. <laughs> So I accepted um, Kaylee's boots. These have been washed, but then they've got dirt again over the tour. I think I might need to, considering how much I talk about the smelly men of the press room, <laughs> uh, I think I need to wash these shoes. Maybe in our bond on the rest day. Wash them into the bin. <laughs> That's what happened when I bought these, actually, because these are from Chicago. Ah, and ah. Uh, when I bought them, the man at the New Balance store uh, begged me to throw my old trainers into the bin, and I relented because I was too embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, this feels like after dark chat, so should we sign off and continue this in after yeah. dark? And because we've just given a taste of what's going to happen there. I mean, there's some good stuff. There's good stuff. Yeah, breaking news. I've got an I've got an exclusive correction. Yeah. Uh, for after dark, which only after dark people would get. Head to escapecollective.com/tdf. Sign up for one dollar. One dollar. It's one dollar. One dollar. It's one. E U R. G B P. It's one dollar. G B P. Yeah. It's one dollar. Yeah. Right, Ian? The way your currency's going, that's yeah. a bargain. <laughs> Absolutely great. <laughs> if you listen to this podcast regularly... Let's do it. Just do it. Just do it. 
One day. Escapecollective.com slash TDF. One day. You can even set yourself a little reminder in your Google Calendar if you are that way inclined. Yeah. Don't. Thank you. Just, but you could. Just do it. All right. Now we're going to go hang out with our members. Yeah. Sorry. And scuttlebutt. Is that the word? There will be some scuttlebutt. Yeah. Yep. Is that gossip? Yeah. I think it's not a verb though. I'll Maybe some muddle scut? Hopefully not. All right. Goodbye. We'll see you in After Dark. See you tomorrow, my bro.